Hi, I'm David Henneman. I'm the R3 coordinator for the Virginia Department of Wildlife Resources. Today, we're gonna to be talking about the gutless method of field dressing deer. A lot of the feedback we get from newer hunters is what are they gonna do with the deer once they actually harvest one? We're gonna go through the gutless method, which allows you to get the majority of the meat off of the carcass without having to get into the body cavity and dealing with the internal organs. So before we get started, we're gonna need a couple things. Uh, a sharp knife, of course. Uh, this is our prototype wildlife knife for the year. It's made by Joiner Die Knives. So we're gonna need a knife, some gloves, and something to put the meat in, whether it's a trash bag, a game bag, or a cooler. We're gonna go ahead and get started. So the first thing we're gonna do is position our deer to where we can get to the spine. The first cut that we're gonna make is from the base of the neck all the way down to the base of the tail, just following the spine, going in the same direction of the hair. While we're doing this, we wanna limit cutting the hair as much as possible and keeping it off of the meat, keeping dirt off of the meat as well. So we're just gonna make this cut. We're gonna follow the spine all the way down to the base of the tail. Before you start processing your deer, make sure you notch your tag, either electronically or physically. If you're in an area with service, it's a good idea to go ahead and check your deer, keeping your confirmation number in case you decide to give any part of the deer to someone else. Once we've got this cut from the base of the neck to the base of the tail, Really, you can just peel the hide back to start to get to the loin or the back strap. It's gonna be the first piece of meat that we get out. So once we have our cut, we're just gonna use our fingers to find the spine. We're gonna put our knife in right beside the spine and cut all the way up. You'll feel the shoulder blade right there. and then come all the way down. Back to the hip bone. And you'll feel it when you get there. So once we have that exposed, you can just run your fingers along really and feel where the back strap is. Pull it loose from the front end. Come all the way back. Use our knife to separate any of that connective tissue. The back strap comes out nice and clean. Next, we're gonna go for the front shoulder. So what I like to do first before I even start is remove the foreleg. Cut around. We're gonna make a cut down the ribs at the back of the front shoulder. If this was a buck and we we're preparing it for caping, we wanna to go to the last rib since this is a doe. We're just gonna come down right along the bullet wound. Clean that down. Make a cut along the back of the foreleg, pretty much where the different color of the hide meets.
So once we have that front shoulder skinned free, I'm gonna skin down to the brisket, cut along the middle of the brisket, and then there's no ball joint in the front shoulder, so it's just connective tissue and muscle holding it together. We're just gonna cut through that. We'll start coming through, and you'll feel it come loose. There's your front shoulder. Now that we've got the front shoulder loose, we're gonna go after the hinds. So we're gonna skin down this belly. And for this, just like at the front, we're gonna cut along where the hair is separated from brown to white. It's the thinnest hair, so we've got the least chance of cutting hair and getting it onto our meat. Once we skin down to this joint, we're gonna remove it from the leg. Got our hide off to where we want it. We're just gonna start working on the inside of the hip joint, being careful that we don't get into the stomach and we're gonna try to expose that ball joint. There's our hind. Now, the next piece of meat that we're gonna go for is the inner loin. Um, just gotta be kind of careful because you are gonna be getting into the gut cavity. So move back, find the last rib. It's right there. And make a very small cut, being careful not to get into the stomach. As soon as you make that cut, you'll actually be able to see the backside of the muscle that you're trying to get. Reach in. Find the front and that'll pull right loose. Go to the back and there's your inner loin. 
Once you're finished with one whole side of the animal, if you're gonna get like burger meat or something, you can move forward, get onto the neck, skin that back, and skin your neck roasts off. Flip the deer over to process the second side. It'll mirror the first side. If you encounter any bullet damaged meat, this meat is still good. Just be careful to remove any bullet or bone fragments from the meat before consumption. So if we clean our deer like this, everything that we get off of the carcass, we can transport it throughout any of the area of the state. Doesn't matter whether you're in a DMA or not. Um, as far as the carcass is concerned, dispose of it however the landowner you're talking on sees fit. Um, and check back with our wildlife division for more updates on how to dispose of carcasses within the DMAs. So we've got our deer all broke down. We've got it in a cooler on ice. It's critical to get this stuff cooled off as soon as possible. Um, we'll talk about the different cuts real quick and what you could do to break these down even further. These are your inner loins. Really, there's, there's nothing you can do to break these down any smaller than what they already are. Maybe chunk them, but this is going to really be the most tender part of the deer. Your back strap, a lot of people cut these into steaks and get that silver skin off of there before you go to process it and eating this. Here's your hind quarter. So within the hind quarter, you're gonna have two different bones. One that's gonna run this way, and then it's gonna come off at the joint. Basically to break this down, you can just follow your muscle groups as you cut it off of the bones. And these can be used for roast, or you can grind some of it, just however you wanna prepare it really. Your front shoulder, it's got several different bones in it. So you're gonna have two long bones and then the actual shoulder blade itself. A lot of people use this for like stew meat or grind it for burger as well. It's an awful lot of resources on the internet where you can continue your journey, figure out how you wanna break your carcass down even further and prepare it. The important thing is getting out in the woods and get one of these to start off with. This is one of many methods that people use to take their deer from the field to someplace more comfortable to process it. If you do something different, put it in the comments. Keep checking back with the Virginia Department of Wildlife Resources for more tips and tricks on your deer hunting journey.